This is Sister Gwendolyn Song from the Sackcloth and Ashes News Report. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you uh, uh, clicked on this video today. I'm here in Knoxville. We're, we're still here in Knoxville for the time that the Lord has us here. And uh, Seho and I, we're doing many things. We're very busy getting involved in the community. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Get involved in an end times move of God within your communities. Make a difference for the kingdom of God. Now, we have become a part of a very loving church family. We have really grown to love these people and to spend time with them in worship and prayer. And funny thing is that many people on the internet have said some pretty rotten things about the pastor of this church that we're attending. And I find it appalling that people can judge others, calling them Freemasons and such, and they have never taken the time to come and meet them in person or to worship with them in person. They're not really being a complete fruit inspector. They have not done due diligence to know someone's fruit. And the Bible says that God is the one who's going to come and cut down the trees that bear bad fruit. And then God is the one who's going to cast them into the fire. So it's as though certain people out there think it's their job to go around casting people into the fire with their own words. And the Lord says, touch not my anointed. And the Bible says that the tongue is a mighty weapon. And when you go around putting others down, you are killing them with your words in the spirit. That's in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. The Bible also says, touch not my anointed with your tongues. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Touch not my anointed. The tongue is a weapon. So for any of us who spend more time going around trying to find fault in others, when you have a whole lot of wooden planks in your own eye, you should really consider joining us on the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday fasting, or one of a, a fasting of your own choosing, so that you can really see how God sees your behavior. And it really does break my heart, and yet I understand it, because when I was more of a baby in the faith, I too had to have some correction. So friends, let your tongue be a tool used for the kingdom of God and bring life to other situations. And I know that with God, all things are possible. Now, I haven't been on here very much like I'd like to because I've had some restlessness in my spirit. We're trying to come up with a game plan to, to get more into the country area. We're looking for about five acres of land in a wooded area where we can also bring others to. We are here in Knoxville, but hey, we're willing to go wherever the Lord leads us. He's the shepherd and we're the, the, little, the little sheep. So at the end of the day, no matter what comes our way, you know, our lives are truly in his hands. But I'm just throwing this out there. If you're able to donate a parcel of land of five acres or so, even if it's got a barn or a, a, a house on it, something that's empty, please shoot me an email at gwendolynsong at gmail.com. Our lease is up here November 1st, so we really need to come up with a plan. And I can't really say much more about that on here. Many of you know that we are working full-time for the Lord, and it's all a walk of faith anyway. So I really felt led to share with you today, friends, what it means and what it might look like to be a child of the light. I mean, if you're a born-again, Holy Spirit-filled Christian, you are a child of light. Have you thought about that? You have the light of the living God inside you, inside your temple. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 4, John wrote this of Jesus, our Messiah. He said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So Holy Spirit-filled Christians are those who choose to walk their, their lives according to the light, the word of God, the lamp unto our feet, and the light unto our path. And Jesus' brilliant light resides in us. And what a great thing to consider today. And I saw this one time in the spirit. I really thank the Lord that I can share this testimony with you today. A lot of you know that I'm a nurse. 
and I was working with this, uh, I, I do pediatric nursing, or I, I did pediatric nursing, and I was working with this little patient. I can still see his beautiful little face, uh, a young boy around the age of eight, and the Lord allowed me for just a split second to see his brilliance, the light of Christ shooting through every pore of this little boy's body perfect white light emanating from his small frail body and actually what i saw friends it had three components to it first was the perfect white light and it was shooting out of his pores and i was in a dark room at the time so i literally saw the room illuminated by this then i saw a golden glow that encapsulated his body and then the surface of his skin was covered with shimmery diamonds, glowing diamonds. I have never seen anything like it. I don't really have words to describe how amazing that brief encounter was. But when, I, when it was over, I think it really gave me a new perspective on the beauty of God's children with the little innocent ones who are too young to know right from wrong which was this little boy's case, and for those of us who choose to strive to walk with Christ each day, we are the children of the light. So I also thought about the account of Moses receiving the Ten Commandments and how the glory of God was upon his face. His face was literally shining so much that the Israelites were terrified of Moses' face and he had to cover his face. Do you remember that story? And can you just imagine being there in that Israelite camp experiencing that? And then what about to be one of those apostles who were there during the transfiguration of Jesus. Jesus himself was in his glorified appearance. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. He is the son of righteousness anyways. And his clothes became white as light. And I just want to share that little testimony with you, friends. The Bible is true. It's even more true and more real than we realize. It's alive. And sometimes we look at everything from this earthly perspective, and then we never really envision what some of these passages look like in the spirit realm. We are the children of light, friends, and our Father is the Father of lights. He's the Son of righteousness, right? And it's our time to shine and to bring his good news to the nations. I want to, I want to uh, salute everyone out there today who is bearing the light of Jesus Christ to the world and who understand that need to work while there is still light. Okay, friends, until next time, shalom.